So you've decided to sell your first property, but in today's crazy market, you have no idea if you should buy or sell first. Well, in today's video, we're gonna take you through some indicators on how to make that decision. If we haven't met, my name is Jay Dyson. I'm a local real estate agent with eXp Realty, and I help millennials just like yourself, leverage the power of real estate for your future. In today's video, we are going to answer the day old question of do you buy or sell first? And unfortunately, this answer changes as much as the real estate market does. No, really, like it literally changes every single time the real estate market changes. So in today's video, I'm going to share some indicators to help guide your decision on whether to buy or sell first. Let's dive in. So after identifying a clear why and understanding that you're ready to move forward with this next chapter of your real estate life, how we're going to decide on whether to buy or sell first is really gonna come down to some main indicators. The first indicator that you're going to wanna to look into is your personal finances. So of course, we wanna have a clear understanding of both your input and output of your budget line, how much money is coming in and how much money is going out. It's also going to be really important that we have a good grasp on your debt because when you apply for your mortgage or refinance your mortgage, that debt to income ratio is going to be a really imperative part of the process. This brings me to my next point under personal finances, and it, this is maybe the best time to loop in either your lender or a mortgage expert to help you understand what the different rates that are offering and as that will truly shape either buying or selling first. Your mortgage broker is also going to be able to help you have a better understanding of what cancellation penalties you're going to have. Now, for a lot of products, you can actually transfer that mortgage to the new property, but that is a very nuanced case-by-case -case scenario. Indicator number two is identifying what market you're currently in. How fast are homes selling in both the market that you're going to sell in, but also the market that you're going to buy in? For example, let's say the neighborhood that your current home is in the neighbors are selling their properties really really fast and you know that your property is going to sell within 15 to 20 days we may opt to leave that as the second portion of the strategy because we know that there's going to be an ease in selling that property whereas maybe in the market that you want to buy in there's not a whole lot of inventory it's a little bit more competitive we're going to want to take care of that buy before we dive into the sell the third indicator to identify either buying or selling first is market trends. So are you currently selling in a seller's market or in a buyer's market? And one way to get a clear answer on this is who has the negotiation powers in the transaction? Because if the sell is going to be easier, you may want to opt for the buy, which could be a little bit more difficult. So getting really clear on either a buyer's market or seller's market will give us, again, another point of direction on either buying or selling first. The fourth indicator to consider is interest rates. And now I'm sure you're probably overhearing about interest rates, but we know that this is an imperative part of the overall real estate market. Lower interest rates often have a higher demand in the market and higher interest rates cause a lower demand. In addition to our interest rates, we also want to take a look at inflation and any kind of economic factors that are happening in the environment. Because again, this is going to help us really get a clear understanding on both supply and demand. Number five is to consider the seasonal factors. We know historically, springtime, our homes present a little bit better, they look better in photography, more buyers are interested in moving in these better weathered seasons. So having an understanding of the seasonal factors is also going to be a really good indicator. Now, we're probably not going to want to sell in the middle of the winter because that is going to decrease your demand. However, remember the market that we sell in is the market that we're potentially going to buy in. So we really want to have that balance where we can both get a deal on the purchase, but also make extra profit in the sale. My two favorite seasons to sell and buy real estate is both the spring market and the fall market because we know that the demand is there and there's an interest from both buyers and sellers. 
The sixth indicator and something to take under consideration is hiring a trusted realtor or a real estate professional. As your realtor, I will be able to give you access to the MLS so that you can stay up to date with both what's happening in the market that you're trying to sell in, but also the ideal market that you're trying to purchase. By having actual data points, you're going to be able to keep it very subjective and really clear on your goals. In addition to giving you access to the MLS, I have a large network of other realtors who have sellers and buyers in their back pocket looking for that perfect property. So having your realtor looped in on your journey of wanting to buy and sell could also give you the opportunity to find both a buyer or a seller off market. Now, of course, having somebody who can navigate all of the different indicators that we discussed is also going to be super imperative because it is our job. We are in the market on a daily basis. So this is truly what we talk about regularly and often giving us a little bit of a leg up on the competition. By having your realtor involved really early on in the process, we can also support in your listing prep. We can help with painting, updating finishes and changes, managing any kind of bigger renovations, but having us in earlier is going to give us the best option and the best head start to get you the most in the market. And then lastly, there are always contractual conditions and ways that we can write the contract that are gonna best support your process of either buying or selling first. So having us looped in will give you that additional information for example, maybe the purchase of your new home is going to be conditional on the sale of your previous. As mentioned before, a lot of these indicators are market sensitive and change as soon as the market changes here in Toronto. So if you're still a little unsure on either buying or selling or selling and buying, then I encourage you to check out the link below where you can book a one-on-one -on -one appointment with me either by phone or Zoom and we can discuss the details of your specific situation. During that call, I will share some of my favorite tips and tricks, some of my team members to help navigate the process of buying and selling simultaneously with the most ease and smoothness. Check out the link below and book your one-on-one -on -one today. Thank you so much for watching today's video. We post content like this weekly and we love your feedback. So leave a comment, subscribe and like. If you're curious to see what the day in the life, a little behind the scenes, I encourage you to follow me over on Instagram at jdysonrealty. I'll see you next week. Uh.